All right, guys, so before we get into the sound design of everything, we are going to be talking about the history of drum and bass. Drum and bass, often abbreviated as D&B, has its roots in the UK rave and jungle scenes of the late 1980s and early 1990s. Jungle, characterized by fast breakbeats and heavy reggae influences, was the precursor to drum and bass. It emerged from London, blending elements of reggae, hip-hop, and electronic music. As rave culture grew, so did the desire for harder and faster sounds, leading to the development of drum and bass. In the mid-1990s, drum and bass began to take shape as a distinct genre. Producers started experimenting with more complex break beats and deeper bass lines. One of the most influential figures during this period was Goldie. Goldie's 1995 album Timeless was a groundbreaking work that brought drum and bass to the mainstream. Its unique blend of haunting vocals, orchestral elements, and relentless beats set a new standard for the genre. Another key figure in drum and bass is Andy C, co-founder of Ram Records. Known for his technical prowess and innovative DJing, Andy C has been a driving force in pushing the genre forward. Andy C's relentless touring and high energy sets have inspired countless artists and fans, cementing his status as a drum and bass legend. Today, drum and bass remains a vibrant and evolving genre. From its jungle roots to its current global presence, it continues to push the boundaries of electronic music. Thanks to pioneers like MC Navigator, Goldie, Ronnie Size, and Andy C, Drum and bass has earned its place in music history. Now let's get to some sound design. Okay, let's get into this. We are gonna be making some drum and bass drum loops here. This is for the rookies out there, those beginners, those guys who are just starting out uh, and you guys don't really know where to start with the drum and bass stuff. So we're gonna start with a snare and you can find snares all over the place, but we have a bunch of snares in the drum and bass DNA pack for you. Uh, we're going to put these on the two and the four. If you aren't familiar with what I'm saying here, this there are beats in each bar. And in this case, we're going to be producing at 172. And we're going to be putting the snares on the two and the four, which is the two beat and the four beat. And we're just going to copy that for every single bar. Make sure that those are in time. Okay, sounds good. We can go into uh, kick two here. And this is one I picked out from our DMB artist series. And we're going to start with a kick on the one, which is pretty standard. You typically find a kick on the one, but we don't want to be placing this on the same beat every single time. Typically, you'll hear this on the and, which is like the middle of the third beat. And we'll do that all the way across. I mean, we could even get spicy here and put one right there. Cool, yeah, sounds good. All right, so next we're gonna wanna add in some hi-hats. I picked out this guy right here. And I mean, typically you'll hear quarter notes or eighth notes with some added pizzazz. I'm gonna show you guys how to add that extra pizzazz here in a second, but this is what that'll sound like. And then eighth notes, that's just every uh, every other, or two in each beat. If you want to add a little bit of liveliness, you could just bring down the velocity on the second one. Or if you wanted to extend all of them, you just hit legato. You can add a room reverb to this too if you wanted to make them feel a little bit more lively more real just shrink that decay and size down a little bit bring that dry wet down a little bit we don't want this to be a, a really intense effect but you could take it or leave it with that okay so the pizzazz typically what 
what guys will do is they'll try to manually draw in their notes or play them, play them in. If you can play them in in time, props to you. I cannot do that. So what I do is I like to grab a top loop, which I grabbed this guy here. And I like to just throw that into where my hi-hats are. We're going to go to drums. And it's going to put these, it's going to detect a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat. So all of these down here, we do not need them. We're going to pull these out there. And you'll notice that this is now at the one octave that is too low for our sampler. We need this to be at, this needs to say C3. So we're going to bump it up one octave by holding shift and using our arrow keys and then bring it back down to C3 just like that. So these feel a little bit jumbled, so I'm going to try to correct a couple of these, like, uh, yeah, let's extend this one out. Give that one a little bit more velocity. And what we could do too, to make these a little bit sharper, I'll high pass these using the filter in, built inside of the simpler. We'll bring the volume up a little bit on the simpler as well. We can even make them a little tighter by switching it to one shot and then hitting fade out like this, bring that up a little bit. And then add our reverb back in. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. And so sometimes you'll find accent snares in there too. You could you could hear that in this in this loop right here. Hear that from that break. So we can sort of add in our own here if we wanted to. I've got my snare down here. It sounds like this. Which sounds pretty good, but I want to uh, I want to turn on this. I added a cabinet to make it sound a little bit like a little bit further further back. It sort of sounds like it's recorded. That's why I want to keep I want to keep that vibe there. And then I'll usually just listen for the pockets, like where I can add this guy. You don't want to add too many of these because then it gets too crazy and busy. Just adjusting the velocity here at the end. But you can also go to add a groove from the groove pool if you wanted to. If, you, if you're wanting to know, like if you click on groove right here and nothing pops up, go up to view here. Hit Groove Pool, and it should pop up right there. So I've got a few grooves in here that are saved in by default, but if you want to try to find some, you can go into Packs, Core Library, Grooves, and they'll all be in here. And you could find one that, like, uh, like maybe you want some, like, Swing. We we'll try that one, and then down here you have your groove settings, so you can sort of play with the timing, the velocity. We'll keep the timing at 
let's say 75%. And I'm going to go into my groove pool and then uh, select swing logic 16ths. I like this one too. So there's like a bunch of different things you could do too that you can add in a ride over the top. Like this loop right here has a ride in it. And I like that. Sometimes I like to just add that over the top of whatever I have. This really depends on what you want. So getting your drums to sound good is usually the first place you should start. If you don't have good drums in your track, you're, it's going to be hard to make a really cool track. So let's move on to the next thing. Big man, sing like, whoa, we won this, so cold, it's icy, like, yo, hitting the world. 